an entitled crazy Karen refuses to let me leave the parking lot unless I hand over my bicycle tire pump and allow her to use it for her bike. Things got so bad that a park ranger came over and tried to intervene and eventually had to threaten to call the police just to get her to leave me alone. And I'm still completely blown away by this crazy lady's entitlement. Here's what happened. So I was cycling at a local park earlier today. It's a sandy area. So I lower the pressure in the tires to make rolling over obstacles easier. I got back to the parking lot. I put the bike on the car rack. I pulled out a pump and I filled the tires back up to the normal pressure. As I disconnected the pump and moved to stow it in the car and drive home, someone cleared their throat loudly behind me. I turned around and there was a woman there with a bike with an obvious flat. She said to me, well, it took you long enough to finish doing your bike first instead of park visitors. Now pump up my tires. Now I obviously looked very confused, but she continued and said, do your job. For reference, I was dressed in a khaki green polo shirt and my car is green. And I realized that she thought I worked for the park district. I said to her, I don't work for the park district. This is my car and my bike. Well, she didn't believe me and wanted my supervisor's name and demanded again that I fill up her tire. At this point, I was getting annoyed. I said to her, I do not work here. If you had asked nicely, I might have helped you, but your high-handed attitude means that I won't, so I'm gonna leave now. I got in the car and I started it, and she actually stood behind the car, refusing to let me back out, all the while directing a steady stream of invectives at me with surprising variety and volume. Thankfully, a real park ranger heard the noise and walked over. She told him I wasn't doing my job and had refused to help her, and she wanted to report me to the park supervisor. I explained that I was trying to leave, and she was blocking me because she wanted me to fill her tire after calling me a number of delightful names, including a lazy public employee. He looked at me, looked at her, shook his head as if to say this happened again, and then told her he doesn't work for us. He has no obligation to do anything for you. And if this is how you're behaving, I can see why he won't help you. Now please, move and let him leave. After a little more discussion, including the ranger telling her that he'd call the local police for some sort of unlawful detainment if she didn't let me go, she then finally let me go. As I drove off, she was giving the ranger a piece of her mind at the top of her lungs. And despite all that, her tire probably remained completely flat. Wow, some people really are super entitled. Like this lady walked up to a random guy in the parking lot and said, give me your bike pump right now. You need to pump up my tires. Like, first of all, why would you be so aggressive about that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, couldn't you just ask in a normal tone and be like, hey, by the way, can I borrow your tire pump? I need it for my bike real quick. Is that okay? Or something like that. Anything other than what she did. Like, she was automatically, like, right off the get-go, incredibly aggressive for, like, no reason. This guy didn't even do anything to her. He wasn't even talking to her. She just assumed, oh my god, it's another park ranger not doing their job. Why aren't they paying attention to every need that I have? And also, like, why would you go to the park with a bike and not have some kind of bicycle pump that you bring with you? Doesn't that come along with, like, having a bike and maintaining it and all this other stuff? Like, even just a simple, like, hand pump that you can use if you get, like, a flat tire or something like that. But I honestly wish I was a fly on the wall to see the expression of the original poster because I think I would also be very confused by this person yelling at me and being so aggressive over something so mundane. And it's crazy to me that she even went as far as blocking him from leaving in his car. Like, this Karen is 100% unhinged and nobody can tell me otherwise. So good for the original poster for eventually getting out of there because that lady was crazy and I don't blame you for wanting to get away. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for telling my brother that he is not allowed to be around my new girlfriend because in the past, he's gotten in the way of me having a romantic partner. And this time around, I refuse to allow him to do that again. Here's what happened. I'm a 19-year-old male and my older brother's 22 and we both work at the same factory. About five months ago, me and him became friends with a woman who's 23 who also works at the factory with us. Soon after we became friends with this woman, she lost her apartment and since me and my brother both live in the same house, we told her that she could live with us. I have never had feelings for this woman, but her and my brother had decided to go out a few times. They were never exclusive, but they were well on their way to becoming exclusive and they were just taking things slow. While he and this woman were going out, me and him became friends with another woman. I expressed feelings for this new woman and my brother very well knew that. Soon after we became friends with this woman, he asked her out knowing full and well that I liked her and soon after they became exclusive. Also, he had completely left behind the woman that we met at the factory. He screwed over the factory woman bad because he told 
told her that he could possibly see a future with her, but when he met the other woman, he left her behind and never talked to her again. Now, for reference, this is not the first time he's made a move on a woman that he knew I had feelings for. He has done this two times in the past, and every time he does it, they just start dating. I thought that it was just a two-time thing, but now with the most recent event happening, I'm starting to think that he does it on purpose. Fast forward, and just recently, we were talking, and I mentioned that I had gotten a girlfriend. He got excited and was very eager to meet her, but I informed him that he would not be meeting her, nor would I bring him around her. He then got confused and asked me why, and I reminded him that he has dated three women in the past that I had feelings for, and that I know he does it on purpose. He then started crying and telling me that it hurts him that I would say that about him. But in response, I simply got up and walked away. The thing that convinced me that he does it on purpose is the fact that he was very close to being exclusive with a factory woman, but he broke her heart and left her for the woman that I developed feelings for. The reason I will never bring him around my new girlfriend is not because I'm insecure that she will leave me for him, but I fear that he will make a move on her, and that is not only disrespectful, but I know it will make her uncomfortable. Me and him have always had a rivalry, and he always tried to prove that he is better than me, and I'm trying to put a stop to it because we are both adults, and he needs to start acting like it. So I really need to know, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? Okay, based on everything you've shared, I personally do not think you're the jerk. Your brother's track record absolutely betrays him in this department. Like, this guy has a history of ruining relationships for you, and basically stepping in and getting in the way. And that, in my opinion, is not okay. Like, even based on what you're describing for this one singular moment with the lady from the factory, as well as the new lady you met besides the lady from the factory, it really does seem like your brother does this stuff on purpose. Like, he literally steps in between you and any romantic relationship and just snatches them away before you even have a chance to say anything to them. So I can completely understand your frustration in this regard. So no, I don't think you're the jerk because I think it would be safer for your girlfriend to stay away from your brother because his past record is absolutely very sketchy and the last thing you would ever want is for him to ruin this new relationship. My girlfriend thinks that my family is too controlling over our relationship and this is because my family basically tried to take over my visit with my girlfriend who has been a long distance girlfriend for the past 21 months and right now I'm kind of at a crossroads and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I'm in a long distance relationship with my girlfriend for 21 months now and I'm two weeks away from flying to her so we can physically meet for the first time. We would always FaceTime every day and night and we would Discord almost 24-7 and we really do love each other and we want to be together. My girlfriend doesn't like it when she notices that I do everything my mom says and she thinks that I let my mom control our relationship too much. For reference, I'm 22 years old and my girlfriend is 25. For example, when I asked my mom whether she would allow me to fly alone for 13 hours to see my girlfriend for two weeks, I am using my own money for my trip and my mom was against it at first, but I took a few more stressful days to finally get her to let me go and be okay about me leaving. Now, I talked to her about it in the first place because I don't want to be like those other people who do things behind their family's backs, like buying a plane ticket without my parents knowing because I love my parents and I thought it was right to let them know first. My mom wanted to let my aunt pick me and my girlfriend up from the airport as soon as I landed. And at first, my girlfriend was against it because she's awkward by the fact that she would be waiting with my aunt because they aren't that close and she thought it wasn't necessary as we could just take an Uber to my girlfriend's apartment. But we eventually came to a decision that it's fine and that my aunt can pick us both up. My aunt then privately messaged me asking if we would like to sleep over at their place and that they would gather everyone to see me after six years and I actually asked my girlfriend about how she felt about that as she hasn't met my relatives besides my aunt. She said she was okay with it as long as we wouldn't sleep there on the first day because we both thought it would be weird that the first day of us meeting would be with other people. So anyways, we all decided on April 13th for us to go there. Then we started planning out other things to do and places to go, and we booked a lot of hotels and had places in mind. We then decided to go to this place that is a one-hour drive from where my mom's family lives, and I told my mom about it, and she then tells me that we should go visit grandma and grandpa while we're there, and we should stay there overnight. So I asked my girlfriend, and she was okay with it. So everything was going smoothly until recently my girlfriend said that we should go on a camping trip with her friends because they want to see me and they'll bring their boyfriends as well. I said sure that's totally fine with me but they all ended up choosing the 22nd to go on the trip which would then cancel out the stayover at my aunt's place. My girlfriend requested that we move the date of the stayover so I asked my aunt. She said the 13th would be the best time as my cousins and relatives are available
available and they could come. Any other day won't work for them because they have a busy schedule and not everyone lives there. I told my girlfriend that and she started to stress out because her friends also have busy schedules and the 13th would be the only time to make this work. I asked my girlfriend if we could just meet up with her friends for lunch or something like that and she said that they won't want to drive two hours just for lunch. They want to do something that's fun and worth everybody's time. So after stressing, I decided to listen to my girlfriend and she made me realize this trip wasn't about seeing family. It's about our time together. She said if they were family, they would listen to me and support my decision and they could make other days available for me and I agreed with her. After telling my mom this, she was disappointed that I'm choosing my girlfriend over seeing my relatives. But my girlfriend didn't have a problem with us meeting anyone. She was okay with seeing my grandparents, but my girlfriend thought it was only fair that she introduces me to her two best friends. I mean, these people are like sisters to her. I then had a whole argument with my girlfriend, and I would really like for us not to be fighting over this. We are okay now, but I just hate picking sides because it's just not my thing. I love my girlfriend, and I love and respect my family too, but I don't think I'm in the wrong to choose my girlfriend over family gatherings. And I'm also not saying that I'm super close with my cousins and relatives, but whenever we fly there, my family and I would be at their place and spend the time with them. I mean, the whole purpose of the trip was to see my girlfriend, and I'm only there for two weeks, which is not enough time. Now, as a long story short, my mom and aunt have already met my girlfriend when last year my mom flew there and my girlfriend wanted to give them gifts. So I asked my mom and girlfriend to meet up and take it to her. My aunt also came along and they had a lunch together. My girlfriend said she was awkward and thought they weren't that interested in her. I said it's normal and I told her they're old and they won't vibe with you anyways. Now, my girlfriend is very independent as she has been living alone due to family conflict and her mother passing away so soon. She shared to me how her dad's mom was too controlling over his relationship too and said mean things to her mom. My girlfriend doesn't want to be in a relationship like that that involves my mom wanting to know everything that we do and trying to tell me what's right or wrong and that I listen to everything she says even though she's wrong. She heard my mom say things that she didn't want to hear when we argued about meeting family on the 13th and she told me that my mom is being too controlling over our relationship. And I agree, but I have no problems with either meeting my family or her friends. It was just hard to decide overall. I chose the side of my girlfriend, but at the same time, I can't help but feel guilty for choosing either or. There will always be another time where I would see my relatives because they would always be there. So how do I explain to everyone that this is the right thing to do for me and my girlfriend and that we're not being selfish? Because I don't want both my family and girlfriend to keep thinking negatively about each other. What should I do? Okay, in my opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with you wanting to spend time with your long distance girlfriend on this trip. Like you've never actually met her and you've been together for 21 months. Like this moment is a big deal and if I was in your shoes, I would want to spend as much time with her as well. So I think you made the right choice of saying no, let's spend time together and like do stuff together as a couple. And if your mom and extended family doesn't like that, then they're just going to have to live with that. This is a rare occasion of getting to see your girlfriend in person. And I completely agree with you. I think it would be a bad idea to let this opportunity turn into some family reunion. Also, you do know you don't have to tell your mom about everything you do, right? Like you are an adult. If you want to go fly somewhere, you don't need to tell her about it. Maybe for the sake of safety, it's probably okay. But if you have all your ducks in a row, you can't just go and do stuff. And with that in mind, you don't have to like ask permission to go flying either. You are an adult and you have your own money. Like you're living almost as if you're still a teenager under their house. And maybe you do still live with them or something like that. But even then, in my opinion, you don't have to ask permission to do anything. You can just go do it and they can find out either after the fact or for the sake of like convenience, you could just tell them if you want to, but not with the guise of being like, ooh, am I allowed to do this? Because in the end, you most definitely are allowed. But I think it would also be very valuable to see what your girlfriend is picking up because I kind of have to agree with her. It really does seem like your mom plays a big role in your life and like in your decision making process. And I think it's time to maybe grow out of that. Like you don't need to tell her every aspect of what you're doing because pretty soon your plans are going to change like overnight. Like if it was up to your mom and your aunt, you would have seen all these family members and barely spent any time with your girlfriend. It's like you almost lost sight of the entire trip altogether because you involved your family in something that was really a private matter. So I think your girlfriend has a point and I think she is kind of right that your family is a little too controlling over your relationship because in my opinion, this was not about picking sides and it really should have been obvious that you should have prioritized your girlfriend over seeing extended family members on this specific trip. Would I be the jerk if I blatantly told my roommate that she is eating way
way too much, costing our house hundreds of dollars in groceries every single month and causing a massive financial burden on my back. Because at this point, I'm incredibly frustrated and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, I want to start off by saying that this is a throwaway account because I don't want my roommate seeing this. There are several points of frustration that I could go on about, but this one is the most contentious by far. For the sake of not writing too much, I'm only going to focus on this one. My roommate has been living with my family for almost a year now. They have social security income, so they do not work and are subsequently at home all of the time. There are three adults and one child in the house, and my roommate eats more than the other three of us combined. It's getting ridiculously expensive to keep food in the house, and the rise in the cost of food combined with the sheer amount of food being eaten daily is making it unfeasible for me to keep up with financially. I have already tried talking to my roommate about the cost increase of our grocery bill, but again, they're on a fixed income, so they can only afford to pitch in maybe $200 a month. The problem is that between the $200 that they put in and my budget of $500, there is still not enough to keep food in the house for a month. I always end up going over budget. I've had to label certain foods that are for the child so that my roommate doesn't eat all of it because they have in the past. I've also come home from work countless times to only be disappointed that there are no leftovers or snacks for me. I get home late at night, so cooking a whole meal isn't reasonable. Not to mention that I'm already tired from working 10 hours and I don't want to do that. So I'm really considering having another conversation with my roommate, but just be more blatantly this time about the food situation. I don't know what else to do at this point, and I don't want to be accusatory, but I can't afford this anymore. I feel like I have to come out and say that you're eating too much and it's a financial burden on all of us just for her to get this message. What should I do? Okay, it's really weird to me that you have like a communal grocery list going on or that you all pitch in for like groceries in the house altogether. Like, why are you not buying separate groceries and saying, okay, these are mine and those are yours. You can eat whatever you want, but stay away from my food. Like, why is that not the setup that's currently going on for your roommate? Because right now it seems like she's giving you all this money and then she just eats everything. And maybe she feels some kind of ownership over all the groceries because she's pitching in money to pay for the groceries. But I'm honestly not sure why you're doing it this way in the first place. Like, it really seems counterintuitive and I just don't see how this benefits you in any kind of way. So having a conversation probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but maybe frame it in such a way where you're like, hey, the rising cost of everything is making it hard. I can't do the shared grocery thing anymore, so you're going to have to figure something else out. And from there on out, keep things separate. That way, the expectations are set all together. And you can know for a fact that starting today, your roommate is responsible for their food and you are responsible for yours. Because what's happening right now sounds absolutely insane, as I really think that there's no reason for you to be spending all that money. Am I the jerk for describing my mom's second marriage and her younger kids as her do-over family? Because I never got any of the love and kindness she is now showing to my step-siblings. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 17-year-old female and I lost my dad when I was 5 years old. My parents were married, but I remember my dad being more present in my early memories than mom. And when my dad died, I knew my mom wasn't there for me. She left me to raise myself or she roped in some extended family to take care of me, usually my grandparents. But she wouldn't always do that. And I was sort of forced to become independent and more mature in some ways to raise myself. Like I had to make sure I ate, did my homework and got to school on time all without my mom helping me. The most she would do is make some food, but she wouldn't even tell me that she had done that. I usually had to search the fridge to find it. My grandparents were the ones who celebrated my birthdays with me, and they were the ones who typically went to my school for parent conferences. My mom just doesn't know me. She couldn't tell you what classes I take in high school, what my favorite food or color is, who my friends and best friends are, literally nothing. Fast forward and five years ago, she met her husband Sam, and pretty quickly, like before, they were living together, and my mom ended up getting pregnant. So, Sam moved in, and my mom married him. She had a daughter four years ago, and her son followed along two years ago as well. And right away, I see the difference in how my mom is with them. She knows them, she loves them, she dedicates time to them, and she advocates for them. All the things I do not remember her ever doing for me. She eats with them and plays with them, and she takes her daughter to preschool every day and takes her for a treat afterwards. And it really just sucks to see. I didn't get a good mom, but I see that she had it in her to be a good mom and chose not to be. Sam isn't as good as my dad was, though, but he's still better than my mom ever was to me. Last week, my mom asked me to babysit for her and Sam, and I said no. My mom was shocked and asked why I wouldn't babysit, and I told her that I had work and I had plans with friends. 
She then told me that she would have expected that I would want time with the kids, but I told her that I don't want time with her do-over family. She asked me what that meant, and I said Sam and the kids were her do-over family. She is a better mom to her younger kids, and she and Sam have created their own perfect little family with them and their kids, and she was never that for me. I told her I have zero interest in helping her out with a do-over family, and I pointed out that it was the most she had said to me in years, because she normally doesn't talk to me or include me in anything, and the only reason she is speaking to me is because she wanted something. She looked at me and said, how dare you say that about Sam and the kids, and she told me I have an awful attitude, and she hopes the kids never pick up on how I feel about them and their dad. She told me they deserve better than being described that way, and she told me I had some nerve to be jealous that her kids have a happy family life. But I just laughed and told her that she only cared about them, and that was pretty clear. And then, to top it all off, she called me a nasty little jerk. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all, because it's pretty clear that your mom feels guilty about the way she treated you. Like, she clearly was an absent mother and she just didn't care. But it's only once Sam comes along and they have some kids that she finally, like, gets things together and somehow turns into this wonderful mother. And in that regard, I don't blame you for being upset. If I was in your shoes, I'd be upset as well. Like, where was this mom when you were growing up? Because you spent a childhood basically taking care of yourself. Like, you didn't have anybody except for your grandparents to help you out. Like, that is such an awful way to live and I'm just so sorry you had to deal with that. So, no, I don't think you're the jerk in this scenario. I think the feelings are really raw and very exposed right now and if your mom seriously doesn't understand that, then that is definitely her problem and not yours. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.